as a continuation of the um, uh, uh, GDNUM now and for that, of course, uh, we cannot ignore the development of the liver. Look at the liver bud here, liver diverticulum or hepatic diverticulum. So you can say liver bud or hepatic diverticulum. So the hepatic diverticulum, as you see here, appears at the fourth week, which is close to the time of appearance of the duodenum, right? And um, uh, uh, it arises from where? From the uh, distal end of foregut. That means not from midgut, no, from the distal end or caudal part of the foregut. And it grows, do you remember from the previous lecture, the um, septum transversum, which is a, a mesoderm, right? Uh, this septum transversum will form the central um, tendon of the diaphragm. Look, above it is the lungs and the primordial heart and um, uh, primordial lungs, right? So, anyway, the liver bud or the hepatic diverticulum grows into septum transversum and because of that, it divides it into two parts, cranial part and caudal um, part. Now, the cranial part of the primordium is the which is the largest one and the smaller caudal one. The rows, the cranial part is the primordium of the liver. This will form the liver, right? And the smaller caudal part uh, will give rise to gallbladder and uh, cystic uh, duct. Now, in the liver bud, the endoderm cells of hepatic bud proliferate and give rise to a hepatic cord, right? The hepatic cord, you know, if you take the histology, you will understand what I'm saying. So I don't like to focus too much now on that, but it's good to know that um, the hepatic uh, cords in the um, uh, uh, in the liver formed from the endoderm, and uh, plus the endoderm gives the epithelial lining the intrahepatic portion of biliary system you know there is a secretion of the bile from the liver through um, uh, ducts here that line by or form sorry by uh, uh, the epithelium in there formed by endoderm so the epithelial lining of intrahepatic portion of biliary system formed by endoderm plus to the uh, hepatic cord itself and you know that the hepatic cord, uh, hepatic cords and stomas, of course, uh, uh, around the uh, hepatic uh, sinuses or sinusoids. Of course, this is a histology. I don't like to focus too much on that. Now, while with further development, um, the liver uh, grows rapidly. Uh, uh, in the fifth and tenth, uh, in the period between the fifth and tenth um, weeks, and it fills like large part from the abdominal cavity. However, um, in the ninth or by the ninth week, the liver forms around ten percent of total body weight. That means um, it's enlarged really, and initially, you know that the liver has right lobe and left lobe, but initially the right lobe and left uh, lobe uh, are of the same size. But later the right uh, lobe becomes like, uh, grows largely. So as I mentioned, the um, uh, liver cords differentiate into the liver cell and the liver cords again uh, originates from the and of course the epithelial lining of the intrahepatic portion of pediatric system are derived from endoderm while the fibrous tissue or the um, uh, um, hematopoietic uh, tissue copper cells or they derived from missing chyme of the septum transversum because we mentioned that the hepatic bud or the hepatic diverticulum penetrates the uh, septum transversum and it divides it into two parts but also it takes a kind of missing chymal cell from there right while the hepatic uh, sinusoids 
um, derived from vital line um, veins. Now, the formation and development of various types of blood cells, the formation of various types of blood cells, a process called hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis, uh, my friend, begins during the sixth week, very early uh, in the liver, and it gives it the dark color. Now, um, on the other hand, the pile start to form um, in the hepatic cell uh, at the 12th week. Now, to the uh, caudal part, the small caudal part, we mentioned that the septum transversum divided the hepatic diverticulum into two parts, cranial part which that gives the liver, and the small or the small caudal part that forms the gallbladder and uh, cystic ducts. Now, uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the caudal part, as I mentioned, this is the gallbladder and this is the cystic duct, and here the stalk that connecting the uh, hepatic duct and cystic duct. This stalk um, form or becomes the bile duct that will open into duodenum, but in which part of the duodenum? Yes, in the second part ventrally why ventrally because um, initially you know that the duodenum like still not rotated but with so it's open anteriorly once it's rotated it becomes like um, uh, twisted um, posteriorly like the you know when the stomach rotated and it rotates with it the duodenum and of course the pancreas and of course the hepatic or the pile duct or they become posteriorly and you know the duodenum itself it becomes retroperitoneal posteriorly um yes as i mentioned the opening now comes dorsally as you see uh, uh here this is the gallbladder, this is the bile duct posterior to the duodenum now, and it's open the second part of the duodenum. Now, similarly, the bile duct similar to esophagus, similar to duodenum, it's obliterated, but temporarily then it will open um, and re-canalized, re-canalized um, uh, later. So, um, we said that in the liver, the bile start to form at the 12th week, and here, after let us say after a week, the bile now entering the uh, duodenum, and because it's a green color, it gives the meconium. The meconium is the first intestinal charge of neonate. Once it born, once he or she born, uh, so the stool, a very stool called meconium, and it's a dark green uh, color because of the pile there. One of the most uh, interesting uh, structures also developed from the uh, foregut is the pancreas. So the pancreas just develops from the um, uh, caudal part of the foregut and it develops or appears as two parts indeed one is ventral small one and one is large which is the dorsal pancreatic parts the butt that means you have ventral and dorsal pancreatic um, uh, buds and the dorsal bud is large appears also first and a little bit is higher cranial to the smaller central smaller ventral uh, but now I would like you to know from the beginning that the dorsal uh, pancreatic bud forms most of the pancreas so this one the dorsal one will form the most of the pancreas so you know that the stomach again and again rotated and the duodenum as well and so the rotation of the stomach and duodenum carries the ventral bud you remember this is the ventral bud so the ventral bud will be carried posteriorly and dorsally along with the of course bile um, uh, duct and then the ventral bud becomes now posterior as you see here the ventral bud 
uh, becomes posterior to the dorsal one because it was here ventrally then it's rotated until it becomes like posterior to the dorsal uh, uh, bud right so the ventral pancreatic bud this one the smaller one uh, it forms or participates in the formation of the uncinated process and the part from the head of pancreas so look at it here now it becomes like posterior to it and then it diffuses with it and by this way um, uh, it forms part from the uncinated process and head of pancreas so again the dorsal pancreatic bud forms most of the pancreas the ventral one moved and uh, because of the rotation of the stomach and duodenum uh, to the back of the dorsal um, uh, bud and unites with it and it participates in the formation uh, of the ancinate and end process of the pancreas now move to the ducts now what would be the result of this effusion now you have to know that the duct i will use this killer the duct of the ventral bud you see here and the distal part of the duct of dorsal bud look at the um this is the dorsal bud right and this is the duct of the dorsal bud and it divided into um i would say cranial part and distal part so with the distal part of the duct um, of the dorsal bud so they unite to form the main pancreatic duct so the main pancreatic duct formed from the duct of the ventral bud and the um, uh, dorsal uh, bud um, the dorsal the uh, distal part of the dorsal bud now what about uh, the uh, proximal part you know proximal because it's closed up so this is a proximal and this is the distal so the the proximal part of the dorsal bud this one will form the accessory uh, pancreatic uh, duct accessory pancreatic duct that of course opens into the minor duodenal papilla again the main pancreatic duct here opens into major duodenal papilla right so you have two papillae one is the major duodenal papillae and you have um, minor duodenal papillae the minor is above it and it's formed by the um, accessory pancreatic duct that formed by uh, the uh, duct of the or the this the proximal uh, part of the duct of dorsal uh, but this is very important now um, finally you know just would like to um, uh, uh, remind you look at here the pancreas and the rotation of the stomach and duodenum look at the ultimate position the posterior abdominal wall because of the rotation and now it's in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peri the peritoneum look at this layer this is the peritoneum the layer that lines the abdominal cavity so look at the peritoneum so look also at the pancreas it's located behind it behind the peritoneum so it's retro peritoneal structure of course with the duodenum this is a duodenum this is a, the pancreas both behind or posterior to the um peritoneum that's why it's called retro peritoneal structures now uh, it's good to know, especially um, to understand from where uh, cancer cells originate in the uh, pancreas. You have to know that the bronchema, and you can say bronchima, the bronchema of pancreas derive from endoderm of pancreatic buds, right? And it forms also the tubules because, you know, there are tubules inside it. Now, 
these are the parenchyma and of the pancreas and tubules from the endoderm. Now, around these tubules form the acini, right? The acini in the um, uh, pancreas during the fetal, early in the fetal period. Now, some of cells are separated from tubule and uh, they make like a kind of uh, islets. Right, separated from from there, from tubules. Right, we call them pancreatic islets. Now, what about the connective tissue there in the pancreas and the interlobular septa? The septa there, it's yes, they originated from splanchnic mesoderm. Splanchnic mesoderm. Now, insulin started uh, to be secreted by the tenth week. Um, that means the uh, parenchyma of pancreas, tubules there and so forth, uh, islets, so they derived from endoderm.